After much trolling and anticipation, Square Enix shocked us all at their E3 2015 press conference with a lot of information about Kingdom Hearts 3. If you're a Kingdom Hearts fan, you know a new trailer is a really big thing. And that's exactly what we got today. Explosions of hype all around, Sora's new outfit revealed, and tons of sick gameplay. Now that the storm has settled, however, it's time for me to thoroughly analyze a lot of what I personally noticed about the trailer. We are going to go in really deep, I mean really in depth in this video, as I will be taking a look at nearly every small detail. Sit back, relax, and get ready to see all you need to know about the new Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. I am going to periodically stop this trailer at many points in time to make comparisons, talk about what's on screen, and even put ideas about the Kingdom Hearts storyline out there. Let's get started. Have you heard of the ancient Keyblade War? Yeah, the Master's favorite story. This area may not be overly familiar right now, but if you would remember back to December, you would remember artists from KingdomHeartsInsider.com recreated artwork from the Unseen trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3 at the Kingdom Hearts 2.5 launch event. This was a trailer that was shown behind closed doors only to those that attended, and basically those that were invited. Cage Insider had artists try and draw what they saw over there, and one of those pieces of artwork was a library-like area with a long curtain that had chess pieces at a windowsill. Well, looky here, we have two young men playing chess at a window with a long white curtain. This is definitely the area that those in December saw. The general environment absolutely gives me a land of departure feel, and this leads me to believe that the name Cable Town is the true name for the land of departure. I mean, come on, what kind of name for a world is Land of Departure anyway? Sort of a similar situation to when they renamed Hollow Bastion to Radiant Garden in Kingdom Hearts 2. Also, if you hear the first two lines that are spoken, this is confirmed to be the conversation released in a teaser in last year's E3 between young Xehanort and young Ericus. Have you heard of the ancient Keyblade War? Yeah, the Master's favorite story. Except it is now fully voiced in English. In fact, if we actually listen to the Japanese version of the Kingdom Hearts 3 E3 2015 trailer, it is the exact same voice clips from last E3. Also, just listen to young Ericus. It isn't just me, but a lot of people have been saying this. I totally hear Drake Bell's voice in this. Yeah, the master's favorite story. 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 Young Xehanort's voice actor was confirmed to be Ben Diskin through his Twitter. Diskin also voiced Young Xehanort in Kingdom Hearts 3D. However, Ericus's voice is still unknown. Sounds like Drake Bell to me, absolutely. But nothing has been confirmed at this time. So, you know the Lost Masters. They're the ones who started the Keyblade War. Now besides Ericus rocking those stylish Terra pants, you can see young Xehanort and young Ericus are playing chess together. This is presumably at the time they were both students training under one master. If we look closely at the chess pieces themselves, however, you can actually see that they all have different symbols at the top. Upon analysis of these symbols, you can come to the conclusion that Xehanort's pieces are to represent the darknesses of the 13 darknesses in Kingdom Hearts 3, and Ericus's pieces resemble the lights of the 7 lights in Kingdom Hearts 3. Although, let me point out to you, obviously because they are playing chess, Ericus has more pieces than just 7. Perhaps it's not just the 7 lights, but all who will help out in the final battle in Kingdom Hearts 3, or maybe all who fought for the light in history. We can actually derive meaning from a lot of the symbols shown. Starting with Xehanort's own pieces, you can see a dice. Reminds me of Luxord. Is this confirming Luxord for the 13 Darknesses, or Luxord's real person? We see a round, eclipse-looking thing. This could be a solar or lunar eclipse, and I associate the moon to Saix. So I think this piece represents Saix, or as he is known now, Isa, who is actually already completely revealed through Kingdom Hearts 3D to be a darkness. So that's a pretty safe bet. On the right, we see another piece with two half-circle looking things converging together. This symbol is actually the same symbol that appears on the keychain of Vanitas' Keyblade. 
This could be hinting at Vanitas being a darkness, which could also mean the return of the unversed enemies in, from Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep being in this game. Below that, we can see an hourglass. Young Xehanort, during his boss battle in Kingdom Hearts 3D, had hourglasses everywhere, even in the background of the fight. Demonstrated time powers and even used time travel to even appear in Kingdom Hearts 3D in the first place. And if that isn't proof enough for you, the keychain on his keyblade is an hourglass. Definitely giving this one to him. Besides those, we have these weird ones that seem to have horns on them or something. This one is unclear, but I do believe this is similar to the goat symbol that we see on the base of Master Xehanort's Keyblade. Now, there are two of these though. What could this mean? One could easily be Master Xehanort. Done. Other than that, we do know that young Xehanort did not wield this Keyblade. So this can be considered a hand-me-down. At the end of this trailer, we see that the Keyblade is actually hanging on a wall of this room they are in. In Kingdom Hearts 2.5's recoded secret ending, we learn from young Xehanort that his Keyblade is ancient and special. Looking at the general design of the Keyblade, it has an animal emblem just like all of the Foreteller's Keyblades in Kingdom Hearts Key. So this Keyblade can be said to have belonged to the 6th Foreteller or Follower. If you don't know who the 6th Follower is in Kingdom Hearts Key, basically the leader of the 5 Foretellers bestowed upon each of them a tome. He bestowed that on each of them except for the 6th for unknown reasons, perhaps dark intentions or something. I believe that this sixth foreteller or follower could be the second goat head we see in the chess piece here. It's a stretch, but it's the best we've got. How he becomes one is completely unknown. Remember the words from 2.5's recoded secret ending. Passed down with this keyblade is also a will. Think of it a will as like an intention. This Keyblade is passed down to the current Xehanort, so it is possible that this sixth foreteller has the actual evil intentions and it is just Xehanort carrying out the intention of this guy. Perhaps I am grasping for straws here, but with his Keyblade carrying his will, he is possibly tied to the Keyblade and uses this to manifest in the current time period in Kingdom Hearts 3, explaining two goat symbols, with him becoming either the new leader of the darknesses or just another one of Xehanort's puppets as a darkness. <sighs> Still with me here, I, I know that sounded crazy, but come on, let's move on. Thankfully, the lights aren't nearly as crazy to figure out. On the far left here, we have a symbol that looks just like the keychain for Terra's Keyblade in Birth by Sleep, Ends of the Earth. Next to that, we have the obvious Mickey symbol to represent Mickey Mouse. And no, please don't say that represents Sora because Sora wields the Kingdom Key. Shush, shush, shush. <laughs> Behind that, we have a star that looks like a Pau Pou fruit. Most likely represents Kyrie. In the middle we have a crown, easily relates to Sora with his necklace and just the symbol in general. The one in the back here's closest match would be the keychain on Aqua's Stormfall Keyblade to represent Aqua. The one up here I'm actually unsure about, but to me it looks most similar to Volpius's Keyblade keychain, which is one of the foretellers in Kingdom Hearts Key. Do you guys think it looks alike? I think it kind of does. This one here is definitely the keychain of Ventus's Wayward Wind Keyblade. The one on the far right here is Riku's Way to the Dawn Keyblade's keychain. That actually adds up to 7 chess pieces for the 7 Guardians of Light if you are not including the Foretellers piece because at the end of this trailer you'll actually see the Foretellers piece get taken out and um, maybe that's a mark of history or coincidence or whatever. So at the end of this trailer the Foretellers piece is gone and there are 7 left, these 7. Does this confirm Lee, Lee is not a light? Maybe. In the back here, we can see Ericus took one of the Xehanort pieces, as in he defeated them in a game of chess. Or like, you know, when you uh, take a piece from someone in a game of chess, it means you took them out. To me, it actually looks like another Vanitas emblem. That could represent the defeated Vanitas in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. And the one on the board could represent the resurrected Vanitas in Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay, I know that was a whole lot to sink in, a whole lot to sink in, but let's keep moving. Hopefully some gameplay action now. Never heard of him. You can drop the facade. Now immediately here you can see Sora in a grassy area just looking beautiful. Sort of a grassy rocky area more like. Sora is wearing his Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit. Hmm, suspicious, but okay. A lot of people think this is the same Tangled world that is shown later in the trailer, but I don't think so because Sora is, is 
in his new outfit in the Tangled footage coming up later, and you can see Greek-styled pillars in the back here. This world could actually be an open exploration area of Olympus Colosseum. In Kingdom Hearts, Olympus was a minigame world. In Kingdom Hearts 2, you got to explore the underworld. And in Birth by Sleep, the town area. So now it looks like with Kingdom Hearts 3, we will get to explore the outside area by the looks of it. You can also see movement is much more free in this game. They took the concept of flow motion from Kingdom Hearts 3D and sort of made it seamless here. Like this is flow motion, but not flow motion, just movement. It's just the concept that is being iterated here with Sora easily climbing on this wall. Sora's Keyblade, as you can see, looks like a Star Secret type of Keyblade. Now, I don't believe that this is a Star Key Secret Keyblade, and this goes back to the Cage Insider illustrations done by what they saw at the launch event, but I believe this Keyblade is the same one that was shown off at the launch event back in December. A completely new Keyblade, really cool, just compare it to this art. Looking at the command and HP bars, not much has changed. Of, over the course of the trailer, we do see Sora take damage, lose HP, but his MP and EX meter will never go down. I still assume EX is for Keyblade transformations, and of course, we still have no idea about if Dry Forms are still in this game, since Sora does get a new outfit. The faces in the corner are no longer animated like they were in the D23 trailer, and now just are flat images like the rest of the Kingdom Hearts games. So almost like a downgrade there. Also, over the course of the trailer, whenever Sora uses magic and commands, we still never see the command menu change from the default attack status. So that may be a result of Square Enix still not implementing that into their builds, just like they have not implemented the MP bar in this build. Also, you'll notice that Sora's battle quotes, aka whenever he speaks while he's fighting, like, come on, ha, yeah, that stuff, etc., is actually taken directly from Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. Um, obviously, I believe that this is a placeholder. I do not think they contacted Haley Joel Osment yet to do any serious voice acting for this game. And, you know, they just sort of edited in Kingdom Hearts 3D's voice clips since they are the most recent. And, you know, honestly, they sound really good, but obviously, I would definitely want him to record new ones. And here we see our first new Heartless. This looks like a water type of Heartless, not only by the way it appears, but because we can see Sora using fire magic on it, as well as it getting a water shield. They also seem to have some sort of teleport move. As Bloody Biscuits pointed out on his live stream, they threw in a clip of Sora missing a slash for some reason. Like he completely slashes nothing here. Why would they do this? It makes no sense. If only... The only reason I can see it making sense is to show off the heartless AI reacting to your attacks and disappearing as a sort of counter or parry move. This looks like it is trying to highlight improved heartless AI in Kingdom Hearts 3. When Sora casts fire on these guys, we can clearly see that fire has been changed back to the Kingdom Hearts 1 style of fire spells. Or I guess you could say the Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep style as well. In Kingdom Hearts 2, fire was more of an area of effect attack around Sora. But in Kingdom Hearts 3, it looks more to be like the Kingdom Hearts 1 projectile, except now, Sora can run while casting spells, unlike both Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. This Water Heartless also casts out a rain cloud type of effect over Sora, and as you can see, it stays over Sora just for the duration of the fight. No idea what it means yet, because Sora's HP doesn't seem to go down while it's casted, and perhaps it slows his momentum down or something, like maybe it makes him slower, because obviously his health is not going down. But this is definitely some sort of status effect, you know, similar to poison and such. We also saw some neat platforming elements, and we will be seeing a lot of it throughout the rest of the trailer. Here's to hoping that Kingdom Hearts will bring back platforming elements because it seemed notably absent in Kingdom Hearts 2, with just an abundance of flat landscapes. We also see Sora do this combo on the Heartless. What is interesting is instead of Sora doing a regular Keyblade finisher like we would normally see, he ends it with fire. This looks like it is confirming the combo magic system in Kingdom Hearts 2 is back. If you don't know what I mean, in Kingdom Hearts 2, magic spells have normal versions and finisher versions. If you did a complete combo up to the finisher and then did a magic spell during the finisher in Kingdom Hearts 2, you would release the finisher version of the magic spell, and this is what we seem to be looking at with this combo here. Yeah. 
Okay, after some more movement, we see our next new Heartless. This Heartless, I feel sort of an Olympus Coliseum soldier theme to it. They remind me of the air soldiers from the original Kingdom Hearts. Anyways, you see Sora do a three hit combo on them. Now, I don't want you guys to think I'm being overly harsh or whatever. I understand completely this is a game in development and it will evolve over time. But Sora's Keyblade combo here is really lame. It's not the fact that it's a three hit combo, nothing like that. It's the feel. His attacks don't feel like they have any weight to it, and his finisher didn't even look like a finisher. This is what I call the Osaka Team Syndrome. If you don't know, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 are developed by a different team than Kingdom Hearts 3. In those games, when you hit Heartless, enemies, or whatever, unless you were using the Oath Keeper, of course, when you attacked an enemy, your attacks always felt like they had good like weight to them, like you were actually hitting something. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance as well as Kingdom Hearts 3 is being made by Square Enix's Osaka team. When I play the Osaka team games, the combos just feel more... How should I say? Flimsy? It feels like I'm attacking with like a, ma a paper mache keyblade or something. And that is exactly what this combo here looks like. Now they have a lot of time to work on it and I hope they can give the combos a better feel before release. Come on, Osaka, don't screw this up. Other than that, the environments in this area look absolutely gorgeous, open, and have a huge draw distance, which we'll see more right here. Now this right here is what makes me think. The game has ditched loading screens. Now this is just my guess, but I really feel like the game no longer has loading screens. We don't know 100%, but remember that the loading screen... You remember, you know, every time you go through a room in other games, you see a loading screen. Gone. Absolutely open, expansive, and amazing world here. And we also have more Greek looking pillars in the background, which is still pointing to this first world being Olympus Colosseum. The question is, does Sora take falling damage? Because if he does, this man's about to get trashed. And here we see another new Heartless, which very much looks like a gladiator type of thing. It actually transforms into a ram here. And here we see Sora, Donald, and Goofy activate what looks like to be a new limit. My first suspicion was Trinity Limit, but this definitely looks like it's a goofy themed limit. Maybe a new Nox Smash? Except this time Donald's involved too. Sora running up the wall is just another example of the awesome new movement looking like they're just seamlessly incorporated. Sora also looks to go into slow motion, which was a new movement technique in Kingdom Hearts 3D. The difference is this version looks more fluid. The 3DS flow motion to me felt very... Blocky? I guess? Pawsy? I don't know how to describe it, but this one like looks so much smoother. And the boss here is Rock Titan, which is the final reason to make me feel like this first area of the trailer is Olympus Coliseum and not Tangled. We see Sora activate the SAME attraction flow from the D23 trailer. This one, while still looks to be on rails, looks slightly more fluid and looks like someone is actually playing rather than the exaggerated slashes we saw in the D23 gameplay, so much improved here. And finally, we get to see Sora's new outfit. This, in my opinion, looks really good. I was extremely worried that they were going to go over the top with the outfit and put like too much armor or zippers or something, but you know, this looks great. In an interview at E3, Nomura said he was torn because fans loved the Kingdom Hearts 2 look so much, as did he. But he was pressured and felt like it was only right to change Sora's outfit, and for inspiration, he took Sora's Dream Drop Distance outfit and sort of mixed it with his Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit to come up with this. So this outfit is like the child of those two, and I must say, I can work with this. Nomura said Sora's proportions may look different to some people while looking at this, but rest assured, his proportions are exactly the same as the model wearing the Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit. Also, as you can see, his hair is cleaner and less wild. You'll actually notice during gameplay with the new outfit that his icon in the bottom right has changed. It seems his hair was purposely cut or toned down with the outfit change. I think the outfit change personally resembles Sora's Mark of Mastery. I feel like you start the game in the Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit, and that's why he wears it there. And then when something is earned or changed or you progress, he gets the new outfit with the toned down hair. But you know, we'll, we'll, not, we'll never know until the game releases. And with that tower in the distance, Sora is here absolutely stepping into a world based on the Disney movie, Tangled. 
The creator of Tangled actually did interviews about Kingdom Hearts 3 and said how he loves Square as bringing his work to life within a game. Sadly, we see no sign of Rapunzel or other Disney characters and how they look in this trailer. But as he did say he envisioned Rapunzel attacking enemies with her hair. Whether that's actually a thing in the game or not, we'll see. And here is a new Heartless, which looks to be based on dandelions. As you can see later in this gameplay, this Heartless actually releases smaller seed Heartless into the air. This reminds me of the tank Heartless from Kingdom Hearts 1 that dies and releases smaller ones, except this time you don't have to kill it to get more appears, it'll just kind of keep popping seeds. And um, at the A3 interviews, Nomura said that you'll see Heartless AI kind of evolve and like there will be sort of a motherly instinct. I'm assuming this is what he meant with the uh, flower Heartless spewing out seeds and then, you know, newer Heartless coming out. The Aerospell returns and it's based off the Aerospell in Birth by Sleep. So it probably won't be that useful. <laughs> but what's crazy is when he casts it, you can see the grass in the environment swirling around and being affected by it, which is crazy attention to detail from the developers. And here we see a Keyblade transformation that looks to be Two Shoot Blaster maybe? Looks cool, the only problem I see is that Sora's face looks... awfully weird <laughs> during the transformation. I think Square should touch up on that. I mean, seriously. The two guns come together to make a cannon, just like it was described in the exclusive December trailer, except this cannon doesn't really look anything like the artwork a fan recreated in December. Hmm, did they redesign it or are we looking at something else completely? And we can see Sora casting the arrow spell while running, just like he did with the fire earlier. Nice to see movement and spells together so you don't have to be tied down when you cast a spell. Again, notice how the environment reacts to his movements, like the water physics here as he steps over the water. It just looks incredible. And finally, we see Sora activate another attraction flow. This time jumping into a pool of water and bringing out the ship. The ship was also presented in the D23 demo from 2013, but this version looks much less sluggish and more refined. When Sora runs downhill, he slides. Again, an example of how movement in this game is just improved. And now we are in Twilight Town. Notice the entrance to the mansion is still sealed like the D23 demo. What's really interesting here is that it looks like the movement is super flexible. Look at this closely. Sora casts Blizzard and then grinds and jumps on the Blizzard that he casts. It's crazy, and then while in the air, he goes into another blaster transformation. We also see Flow Motion return real quick, once again for a little small snippet. Another attraction Flow revealed is the teacups. Again, more rides from Disney. Really cool concepts here. In, in, in an interview um, after E3, or at E3 I should say, Namora said originally he was going to make it so that during the teacup, Sora went into first person perspective. But players kept getting dizzy, so he changed it to what you see now. Oh my god, I'm just gonna say it right now, this is the coolest looking Keyblade transformation animation I've seen yet. Notice how Sora comboed into it before activating, again showing that these are very flexible in combat. You can like do it in the middle of your combos and whatnot. You can tell this is Olympus themed because you can see Zeus on the tip of the keyblade during the transformation here. And the Olympus emblem is displayed during the transformation as well. Not to mention the obvious Pegasus run inspiration. I'm just worried that these transformations might get a little bit too overpowered. I hope Square knows how to balance them. I mean, look at this! But we, we don't need an OP Sora to make Cage 3 too easy and suck the fun of it. I don't want an OP Sora. I'm trusting you, Square. And finally, we are back at the library that Ericus and Xehanort are in as they continue their conversation from last year's E3 showing. You see this crystal here? Another reason this makes me think this world is the land of departure, I think this crystal is the same as the communication device shown in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep when Ericus talks to Yen Sid. Perhaps the crystal belongs to Ericus and Xehanort's master that they refer to in the conversation? On that land shall darkness prevail and light expire. The future. Again, now we see the chess pieces. Xehanort takes out the piece that I believe I pointed out I thought was Volpius? 
this chess game seems sort of like a coincidental prophecy with all the symbolism. And now when we play and finish Kingdom Hearts Key, maybe we'll find something about like something dark taking Volpius, or maybe Volpius will return in Kingdom Hearts 3 as a darkness. I don't as a darkness. I don't know what this is symbolizing here, but it's being taken out, or if that chess piece even 100% is Volpius. It's already been written. Again, we have to remember young Xehanort does not wield this Keyblade yet. He does when he's older, but it seems the owner of this antique Keyblade, again, I would assume it's the master of both Ericus and Xehanort, just chose to hung it up. Whether he chose to pass the Keyblade down to Xehanort or Xehanort took it by force is something that is still unknown. Remember, this is the Keyblade that has a will that is being passed down with every wielder. When Xehanort says fate has already been written, it's safe to assume that he's hinting at the Tome of Prophecies discussed in Kingdom Hearts Key and briefly in Kingdom Hearts 2.5's recoded movie with the Maleficent Pete scene. Who's to say I can't change it? And maybe light will prevail. And finally, Ericus moves the Sora piece, quote unquote, to take out what I assume to be the quote unquote Xehanort piece. It's hard to see, and saying Ericus says light will prevail. Is this foreshadowing that Sora will defeat? Xehanort in Kingdom Hearts 3. Probably. There is more light than meets the eye. You might be surprised. Oh, I hope so. And lastly, I want to point out how beautiful the character models for Xehanort and Ericus are. Jaw-dropping. Also, Square Enix is actually giving character models separate lip syncs for English and Japanese for the first time in Kingdom Hearts 3. How do I know this? Look at Ericus speak in the Japanese trailer, which was also released today. Now I'm gonna play the Japanese lip sync with English audio. You might be surprised. See, it, it just doesn't match. But in the English trailer, it matches. You might be surprised. Square is definitely putting higher production value into this Kingdom Hearts than any other, and it gets me very excited. Oh, I hope so. And as you can see, the game is still in development. Now this doesn't upset me at all. Come on guys, what would you rather have? Square give you a release date that they are not sure of and delay it inevitably? Or them just say now in development and give a proper date when they are ready? Just let them announce a window and a date when they're ready, like seriously, I was happy enough just seeing Kingdom Hearts 3. And that is my complete ooh, Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer analysis. As you can see, I went really in depth, so liking, commenting, favoriting, subscribing, whatever you can do is very appreciated. I've been Soralum1, and I hope you learned something, or at least this got you thinking. I'll catch you guys later. That's all I have for you guys today, but ugh, I don't know if I can make it to the next one without your help. Give me strength.